Mitch Kupchak, the Laker GM, joins us. How do you answer that question there, Mitch? Greatest Laker of all time. It's a tough question to answer. Um, you know, we've had great fortune here. When the team moved here in 1960 with, you know, Jerry West and Elgin Baylor and Will Chamberlain and then Magic and Kareem. Um, a tough question to answer. Um you know, so for me to, to venture a guess and say which one, I don't, I don't think I'm going to go there. But there's two or three guys, and he's right there. But if you're starting your team, is your, is your answer different if I say you were starting a team with the all-time Laker greats? Who would you start with? Would that be different than who you think the greatest Laker is of all time? Well, it, it'd be tough to pass on Kareem. Yeah, I'm right you know, there with you. Yeah, if you're going to start a team. And, and this was when we played the game a different way. Uh, today, it seems much more wide open, a lot more motion, a lot more threes. Um, but I would probably, you know, start with Kareem. He plays his longevity. Now, I didn't mention Shaquille either. He was pretty good also. <laughs> All right, when did Kobe tell you that uh, this season was going to be his last? Well, we've had multiple discussions over the years. And when we signed him to the two-year extension, you know, the understanding that he left me with was this was going to be it. And um, so that was my understanding. Now, I got a call from him on Sunday, you know, out of the blue, uh, telling me that he was going to hand out some pamphlets at the game announcing that this was going to be his last year. So I was startled, you know, by the phone call and the fact that uh, he was going to make an announcement that evening. But it was my understanding all along. Wow. Did something happen, though, that it came out of nowhere where he just all of a sudden said, okay, that's it? You know, I've been around the team a lot uh, this year because we're very young and uh, we didn't start out. Uh, and right now we're not playing great, obviously. Um, so uh, being around the team more than I, I normally am, I did notice, you know, uh, Kobe's demeanor and uh, he seems more pensive. At the time, I thought it was, you know, because he wasn't playing up to his standards, and that's how he gets. But looking back on it, it may have been, um, you know, just a realization, you know, that took a week or two, that this is it. I should probably make an announcement. I think it, it lifts a weight off his shoulders, yeah. you know, that he doesn't have to deal with the speculation and coming back, and he can actually enjoy, you know, the last year and enjoy the appreciation that I think he's going to get, probably starting tonight in Philadelphia which is the city that's booed him in the past. <laughs> did uh, did he ever come close to retiring before this? Uh, no. Never had that no, discussion? Ne ne no. Ne never a doubt, <laughs> despite every injury, you know, the Achilles, the shoulder, the knee, uh, th there was never a discussion about, you know, I can't do it anymore. How does this affect your plan at all moving forward? Well, it helps us uh, only because, you know, we don't have to predict, um, you know, what may happen at the end of the year. Now, now all along, it was my understanding that this was going to be it. Uh, but there was always a little bit of speculation, well, that maybe it's not. Okay, so so in terms of planning, you know, we know he's not going to be here. And uh, we know we're going to have additional cap space. And we know what our needs are going to be on our roster. So in that regard, it helps us. But, you know, to go forward and just to think about Kobe not suiting up at 24 and not walking out there, you know, that's a hurdle in itself to get over. So I don't know if that's a good thing, but we do have some clarity about what our team, you know, will need and what our cap situation will be this summer. Will his minutes be altered? I would hope so, Dan. I don't know if Kobe's on board with that. Uh, he wants to play every minute of every game, and he's always been that way. You know, he's always fighting with the coach, with Byron, you know, about I want to play more, I want to play more. Uh, in my opinion, uh, I think he should back down a little bit. Uh, you know, you don't want to go through your last season uh, fatigued and achy and injured. Um, if something should come about, like a sprained ankle or a sprained muscle, you, you don't need that. Uh, so I would hope that he could back down a little bit and uh, really just, you know, soak in the fact that this is his last year. Yeah, I'd like to see him make the entire season. That would be that would be my concern as a fan wanting yes. to see that. But you know, it, yeah, it, it, it's it what made shame. Yeah, what made him great is is what is sometimes the biggest obstacle. That you know, you have that will that hey, I'm still great, or I can be great, or I can play 35 or 40 minutes. And that realization, hopefully, that starts to set in here with with him announcing his retirement at season's end. 
Yeah, my, my memory, I, you know, I, get, I get asked a lot about your memories of Kobe, which one stands out. And, and it is the game, you know, three or four years ago. Um, you know, we were really struggling to make a playoff run, and we were getting in. We had Dwight, we had Steve Nash, and you know, we didn't play well at the beginning of the season. So we really had to go 28-12 and 12 to get in. And um, I'm in my seat at Staples, and he makes that move at the top of the elbow to get to the basket, and he goes down. And he grabs his ankle, and I'm saying, okay, he sprained his ankle. You know, this is time out. He walks to the bench. You know, then he walks back to the free throw line. You know, he's walking a little gingerly, but I'm saying it's a sprained ankle. And then he shoots two free throws, um, slowly walks back to the bench. And, and, and I, John Black, our PR guy, comes up to me and says, Mitch, um, Kobe's out rest of the game, probable torn Kelly's tendon. And, and I was like in shock. I, I've seen a lot of players go down with an Achilles. And once it happens, you know, they're in shock. Uh, they're, out of, they're out of the game. They're out of the practice. And you can tell. I had no idea. Wow. And the fact that he would walk back to the free throw line, you know, make two free throws, and then walk back. To, so to me, that, that's a defining moment as to who he is. That that's his determination and his perseverance. And I don't think there's been anybody in that regard like him. Mitch, thanks for joining us. Uh, certainly interesting season and get a little more interesting here as uh, it plays out. But thank you for joining us. Okay, Dan, thank you. All right, Mitch Kupchak, Laker GM.